So, hello everybody, and welcome to another session of Never Going Home. It is nice to be here again for the fourth week in a row. And, as a lovely and gentle reminder, we are in the midst of Camp Streamix. And as assistant counselor for Team Annihilation, uh, please, by all means, uh, donate points. Help us get the most points and be the best winners as it is. And uh, thank you all for being here. Now, And if so... you only speak in musical terminology, give us your money. All, all that, that you've got. got. <laughs> Just fork it on over. Or some Carl's gonna get shot. No, what? No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. McKinley's gonna be fine. I don't wanna get They're shot. all gonna be fine. Mostly, hopefully. So, so what, what did you mean by shot? Uh, speaking of, thank <laughs> you, Talu, for popping in and giving your support to the team. That's very, very that's nice and sweet of you. a hundred dollars, isn't it? Mwah. Yeah, what that's the, the second week in a row. The thank you very much. Jesus. Talu, do you have a job? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Guys, the song worked. Do it again. <laughs> no, no, no. The song works once per week. We can't let yeah. it wear out. Yeah, no. It's very much like an ancient curse. You cannot use it multiple times or else it'll go back on you. Precisely. The monkey paw curls. The monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of mon monkey's paws, we are uh -oh. playing a game, so uh, we've all been speaking, but I might as well do a little formal introduction. Joining me today, my lovely cast includes Carl. Hi! And then Split. <sighs> lovely day. Also, day for a war. also, we have uh, Upgraded Moon, Jordan. <laughs> And, of course, we have Xander. We no longer have Upgraded Moon, also known as Jordan. <laughs> wow! Wow! So, I know I did the recap last time, but is anyone willing to do it this time? No pressure. And if nobody is, that's fine. I can go ahead and do it. But if there are any volunteers... Split, you're, you got a swagger about you. What if I volunteer you? No. He's doing a little shimmy. He's doing a little shimmy, on he's doing a little shimmy and I'm like, ooh, look at this man. He's getting some spice. Let's go. I'm just happy to be here. Ah, me too. I think yeah. we can take this as a collective Atwis, please recap. <laughs> collective. <laughs> <laughs> totally fine. There was uh, the option uh, was on. you do, Xander? Fuck yes. you. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice. All right, recap time. So, last we left our unit. They finished up the um, business, one might say, with the press, the reporter, and as well as, you know, rooting out the whole potential turncoat. Somebody may or may not have been giving information about the top secret tank project to the German. It was a whole thing. Trench rat bit his dick. It was a good time all around. The reporter's notes were destroyed. Luckily for Marlon Pierce, he was not killed because that was indeed an option on the table. But uh, he lucked out. Lucky, lucky man. So then they moved on. The unit did. Uh, they were tasked to bring a shipment of sort of advanced gas masks to a particular area on the front. They had been suffering from a strange case of gas or fog. They had gotten shelled about a week prior, but the gas had not faded away, which was highly atypical, and it had been actually getting worse and spreading. And if the cause wasn't shored up, it would be a very, very bad time. The line would break and it would be awful for everyone. So they delivered the masks, they were briefed on the issue, and they were sent in to find the cause of the gas, figure out what was going on. Also, they were accompanied by a certain Corporal Oliver, who was one of the who was the only surviving member of a previous expedition that went into the gas. Unfortunately, and as this was pointed out by one of the one of the commanding officers at the uh, aid station, that's a whole you know deal in and of itself. Uh, for some reason, what he was suffering didn't seem really consistent with gas at all. It was more along the lines of 
disease or pestilence, but he insisted that he wanted to help you guys and at least escort you guys to where he last saw his unit and his comrades. So he did so. And unfortunately, uh, you found the dugout where they were. And luckily, Lance Corporal Morose was quick on the eye and quick on the trigger and noticed a shift in Oliver. Something went wrong in him. And he turned to attack. And very, very luckily for all of you, he was killed before he could do anything. And as he died, he thanked you. And then you went into the dugout and you saw the bodies of his comrades. And you saw the vermin crawling over them under their skin, writhing, and you lit them on fire. And that's where we are. You're at the burning dugout in amidst the choking, nauseous, fume, noxious fumes of the gas, and uh, here we are. I suppose I probably should have looked a bit more before doing that. I don't think it's entirely, um, <clears throat> don't think it's uh, entirely a wash. Might not be anything of value to have found them there. For once, I'm glad to be wearing these fucking masks. Is it just me, boys? Or does that fire burn weird? What do you mean? It just... I've seen a lot of things burn. Just, uh... I've seen fuel, lumber, bodies, obviously. But, um... Something about this one just... This is new. I'm not entirely fond of it. This is, uh... Well, I'd say unnatural, but... What the bloody fuck is natural these days? Alright. <clears throat> not in the sea air, then. Just keep moving. Presumably find out where the guy is, uh... Is localized beyond what we've seen already. Right, right sir. Okay. So I will. Don't want any make... more surprises. So, as you travel, uh, the gas does get thicker and it gets harder to see. So I will tell you mechanically that this does have a little bit of an influence on how things work. Oh. First off. Everyone gets a bonus point to any rolls of stealth that they do. It's really Makes hard sense. to see. Now, yeah. that includes you, but it also includes anyone or anything else that might be rolling stealth. Also, the poison and the disease in the air makes it very, very difficult to, you know, catch your breath tend wounds, stuff like that. You are not able to spend cards to heal hit points until gotcha. you're out of this gas. So, <clears throat> how do you uh, how do you proceed? We're down a cocktail. Just have the one left. All right. I want uh, all of you, if you're not already, have your guns out. Make sure they're, um, Morose, I want you up front with me. Um, McKinley and Thatch, uh, hang back a little bit, no more than two meters if you're pushing it. But uh, we'll look forward. You keep your eyes on our sides and back. Just keep your guns out. Right. Don't want any surprises. Of course. 
Thatch nods. And I suppose the plan of action here is just then to uh, push on into where the gas gets thicker and thicker. You know, just kind of moving with the goal of if it's denser, that's probably the source. So keep going where it gets harder to see. Okay. There's oh, nothing God. fucking alive in here, and I don't like that. Don't worry about oh, it. God. So you move forward through the trenches, and it's actually fairly easy to tell where it gets thicker. If you look up towards the sky, you can't really see the sun, but you can sort of see the roiling as the gas rolls over the top of the terrain and over the top of you, the way it settles down into the trenches. And as as you go, you do hear voices coming in from across no man's land. And uh, they say, First Island! You hear that? Zuken Zinaku Belebenden. Gayen! Gayen! We got jetties. Um, Harry. Everybody, we need to. Yeah. Um, is there like like a low? Is there like a place that we could use like get behind? Yeah, there are plenty of like underhangs and you know yeah. sort of dugout areas that you could easily e hide in. When when Morose drops, I immediately like go into like a half crouch and signal to uh, McKinley and Thatch like you know move in this direction and we're going kind of like behind like stuff and then i while morose like they're just providing any potential cover something does happen once we're tucked behind a wall i give him the signal to book it over to us too okay um for the initial i do want everyone to roll me a stealth roll and this is going to sure. be a challenge roll so between all of you i want at least five successes and please keep in mind you get a bonus point uh because it's stealth and the fog is so thick all right I'm so all dump. of you get a point to fuck yeah. around with yeah i'm dumping all my points I, I have low i have low bronze so i'm just gonna dump it all and pray yeah that's i expect that to happen so can i can i use the point to to like learn well uh, what, what's the term? Because I, I don't have stealth marked down. Like, yeah, so you you can buy you can buy the training. You can buy the ability buy the to training. roll. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. You can absolutely use the point to do that. Um. All right. So we add an extra point to fuck around with. I use two of mine. I'm gonna go ahead and bump my four to a five. And can I re-roll the rest? Yep. Sick. Oh please. Okay, I've already got training in it, so I'm going to okay. toss um, two in there. I'm going to use my last point to bump my four to a five Boom. to make that okay. two successes. All right. Oh, thank God. <laughs> nice. Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank oh, I was... Oh, fuck, man. <laughs> yeah, thank God, because... Yeah, I'm, I'm not stealthy. <laughs> okay, good. We're good. McKinley knows how to hide. <laughs> All right. Uh, between sort of tucking yourselves up against the wall, the earthen fortifications, then dropping to the ground, you wait and you pause and you sort of gesture the quick over. And luckily, uh, the cover of the fog, you know, prevents anyone from seeing you. And from your vantage point, you kind of see a little bit ahead of you sliding down into the trench from No Man's Land. Uh, two, and yes indeed they are German soldiers, kind of slide down and one of them sort of stands up above and he's holding something kind of uh, it's not really something you've seen before, but it's kind of large and it's kind of heavy looking, almost and they're all wearing they're all wearing gas masks, for sure but they don't seem like the sort of crude gas masks that you've seen Germans wear before. They seem advanced, almost as if they were preparing to go into something that needed a little extra something. And uh, oh, you hear them pain. speak. Mm, there are three of them in total. Uh, the One at the top holding like the uh, larger weapon uh, barks down to the others. Siehst du es schon? 
uh, they sort of look around. They kind of have their rifles a little bit at the ready. Nine. Nine. And they begin to move off into the mist. You see would, that? Would McKinley be able to pick up anything that they might have said? Uh, you know, we've established that McKinley has a little bit of German going on, so how about yeah. you give me a communications roll, and uh, I want, like, a target number of one. Hmm, okay, I don't have any training in communications. And how, what's your smarts? Uh, four, though. So That's not bad. Yeah. I, can I mean, one... I mean, you know, it's like if you could just you could just dump it all and just roll three dice because I mean, like it's not a big deal if we don't know what they're saying because it's you could just I, go I for it. might as well go ahead and dump it. Hey, hey, a bang. Ba -ba yeah. there you go. Yeah, uh, McKinley, you were sort of you kind of your ears pricked up at the German a little bit, and it. It's kind of a little difficult to make out what they're saying underneath the gas masks, but you're fairly certain that they are looking for something. The the one up top said something about uh, spreading out, look for people or look for survivors, something like that. And then uh, later they said something about, do you do you see it yet? But they didn't specify what it was. So whatever it is, they're both looking for live people and then something else, whatever that might be. And then I, sub I, I assume you relay that to all of us? Yeah, um, he, he would uh, kind of turn towards uh, Faulkner and go, so they're looking for survivors, but I think they said something about it. So they're looking for something in addition to survivors. Got it. All right, boys, here's the plan. And let me know if this is a shit plan. Oh, we got Jerry's in here now. And given this fuck all gas fog we're dealing with at the moment, I want to avoid a firefight because I'm not fond of things shooting on me that which I kind of see. So uh, we're going to keep low. Maybe we follow them, stick a little bit behind, see what the Jerry's want, and if they get involved with anything, we'd best know what they're involved with, and if it involves us. Because in addition to this gas, the Jerry's also know about it, so we should know what the Jerry's know to report back with, of course. You should see what the big one was carrying. I fucking what what was he carrying again? He he was carrying a heavier looking weapon. It didn't look like a machine gun or anything you'd ever seen before. Can't can't say I've ever seen a weapon like that before. That's what I'm saying. I'm a bit curious uh, myself. We all know that 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 they've got a lot of interesting weaponry in the works. So I'm keen to. All right then. Give it a count of. Give it a thirty count, and then move in their direction, low and slow. We don't need to keep a visual. We just need to make sure that we are moving quietly, out of sight, and keep a firm fucking eye pressed, uh, ear pressed, for any gunfire. Or um. Movement. Oh, yeah, movement or even just any German you might hear. All right. Uh, Morose, you take the point. McKinley, Thatch, keep low, stay slow, keep moving on through. I'm going to hold up the rear. Keep an eye on you, boys. You keep an eye forward. All right. Uh, is, there, is there anybody, like, nearby us right now? As far as you're aware, the only living people that you've seen were the three Germans that were ahead of you, that scouting party, and then, well, Oliver was alive for a little while, but he's dead. But you haven't seen any other evidence of any other soldiers or any survivors at this point. 
Okay. It's been about, uh, to, to clarify, it's been about a week since this sort of gas area has settled in in this section of the trenches. Okay. Yeah. Uh, gonna be doing our best to follow suit of the Germans just in their general direction. Staying slow, staying low, and I'm keeping a firm eye out on everything around the gas. Ears out, everything. Max perception. Okay. All right, awesome. So uh, there's some good news and there's some bad news. The good news is is that the gas is so thick that it's it would be incredibly difficult for them to notice you or see you. And it seems like, you know, nobody stopped. Nobody's really taken any notice of you all. So at least you're in the clear on that level. Alas, um, it also seems like wherever they were going they were going fairly quickly almost as if they knew what to look for and you very very quickly lose them in the mist um can I track their footprints hmm you know what uh sure give me a give me an investigation roll and uh, let's give it a Let's give it a two, because it's still fairly difficult. Everything's pretty well traveled just through the nature of it being a trench and there being duckboard and everything, but uh there's enough mud that you could okay. maybe get a get a read on that. Alright. <sighs> oh nice. Oh I even have to oh. use all, I even have to use all my points. <laughs> I even have to use my awesome. Uh so between the uh between following the footprints and also sort of watching to see where the gas is the thickest, you do manage to get a decent enough trail on them and you follow them down the line and into the mist. All right. <clears throat> How many? You can't. Three. Same amount? Good. Good, good. So thing about the mist is that it kind of it obscures everything it kind of plays tricks on you a little bit and you kind of got this earlier morose when you were down in that dugout the way things almost seem to like crawl at the edges of your vision and that seems to be happening as uh, you're one of the people who often takes point in the walls of the trenches seem to almost close in and start to writhe under your vision. Um, that's when you notice it's not a trick of your vision at all, actually. The walls are moving. The earth is moving. The sides of the trenches are teeming with insects, with bugs, with worms, all sort of undulating and writhing up against the side. You see vermin, rats, and mice sort of scrabbling, scrabbling along the sides of the trenches. You look down and you see that there is water, yes, and it is flowing in places, but there is almost a flow of rats darting here and there throughout the trench as you walk. Oh, that's nasty. Moreau's knowing that the lieutenant's not far behind holds up his fist with his other hand still holding his rifle aimed and just looks back at Faulkner and then gestures to the walls yeah Faulkner I assume sees this too oh yeah no everyone sees it it's become very apparent to everyone That. What do I think? I think it's fucking disgusting. No but, shit. Yeah. I think that when we're getting closer to the center of whatever this is, didn't see bugs outside of anything other than those corpses before. Now we're seeing bugs all over the place and vermin too. You all, uh. 
You all know your revelations. Uh, and so... Morose just starts going again. Uh, and... and yeah, like, fucking... Mor yeah, just Falcon just looks around. Um... And, uh... Just kind of is just looking at do these bugs and insects and like they look like just like terrestrial insects I'm I've seen before. Yeah, no, they they look like normal insects. They kind of Faulkner. I'm sure that uh, you know you grew up. You've had time out in the woods. Uh, you remember when you were a young kid, you found a rabbit out in the woods, and it was sort of laying there, breathing heavily. You flipped it over, and it was- the corpse was crawling with maggots and grubs on the inside. Basically that. Fucking pestilence. And as for rats, they're- they look like regular rats as well. Nothing pings as- super odd about the makeup of these creatures. That's the first actual rat we've seen, or any living creatures at all since we come in here. That's not necessarily a good sign, but it's a sign. Alright, keep going. I'll stay behind. Let's keep going. So Try not to touch rats. the walls. Question. Are we stepping on these insects? I'm so glad you asked. Uh, <laughs> yes. Crimson. As you walk, yes, it is a little crunchy as you walk through the mud, <laughs> the standing water. You know, there are places where duckboard has been laid down. You do feel the disconcerting crunch as your boots go over the insects. At one point, one of you probably so stumbles a little bit, puts a hand on a wall. Insects. <laughs> Feels like wet autumn leaves. Sorry, McKinley, so, you're saying? McKinley hates this. His <laughs> skin is crawling. He is stepping on these disgusting things. He's trying not to step on the rats if he can, but he can't avoid the bugs and the grubs and the other weird shit that's going on. And if he were to listen, he's like muttering under his breath going, is this what the god damn it <laughs> he's just like continually muttering it's just all these profanities and like dear lord and he's throwing in a bunch of little prayers in the middle of it like this is not natural he has never uh, um, come across something like this before and he's just he's preoccupied to say the least <laughs> um Faulkner will make a point of saying from his position behind the group to speak to the very quiet, very <laughs> green around the edges Milo Thatch. Marlo, is it Milo or Marlo? Sorry. Marlo. Marlo. Marlo Thatch. Point at the walls and be like, that that be good in the gumbo. <laughs> yeah, you funny. That's funny. Sorry, that was out of character. <laughs> Marlo goes back to being quiet. You can kind of tell that Marlo's just really not trying to look at the walls. Oh, yeah. He's, he's just looking forward. He's not even looking down. He's just looking at McKinley's back, just really just trying not to look at these fucking bugs. You got All a right. stomach, but man, the bugs are gross. I, as, as you proceed, I want you all to make another stealth roll, and I'm looking for four successes total from the uh, unit. And remember, you do get the extra point to fuck around with. Right. <clears throat> Second verse, same as the first. Not bad, not bad. All uh, right. I'm going to use a Oof. point to turn that four into a success, so that's three on my part. Um, can I use a point to re-roll everything? Yes. Okay. Because, oh yeah, I can't fix that. Ooh, all right all right we're good we just made it we just fucking made it <laughs> i am so glad he's trained <laughs> you uh as as you proceed down the line you almost kind of start to discern a 
pattern. The rats, the mice, the vermin, they're all generally going in the same direction. Almost as if it was a river of some kind. And luckily they don't really seem to take notice as you follow them deeper and deeper into the pestilent clouds. Well, it, here we go. This is it. Alright. Keep moving. Be quiet. Just don't, um... Nobody fucking fire first. Alright? Nobody let loose a shot if you can help it. Gotta stay cool. Gotta stay cool. Stay cool. No so, promises. I'm at the front, remember? I'll put you at the fuck- I'll put you in the fucking ground if you don't listen to me. Yeah. Something else will too. Fair enough. So, luckily at this point, everything seems to be leading to one nexus, one point. Uh, Marlo, you've kind of given up on following the tracks. There's a bit too much going down on the ground anyway. But after some time, you all make it to what seems like is likely the source. And once you get closer, it gets kind of... It's very... It's very quiet. The, the, the vermin seems seem to be, you know... They're almost keeping a radius around this area where they're not moving into. They're kind of, you know, I, w I don't want to say circling it, but there seems to be a delineated edge. And it seems to be centered on this sort of half-collapsed area of trench. There's a... It looks like a dugout was basically hit directly by some kind of artillery. And as you draw closer, there's a canister. There's a canister amidst the rubble, and it is spewing forth this gas. No sign of the Jerry's around us? Nope. Any sign of a trap? Give me... Uh, we'll say investigation target number two. May I also kind of look around for traps? Sure. Uh, same target number. Okay. Nice. Right. Got it in one. Yeah. Also got Ooh. it in one. Nice. You guys are on fire today. No, uh... Oh, we got this. You poke around and you don't... Really, you don't really see anything in terms of traps being laid. You've heard that occasionally after Germans will go through, will retreat from an area, they will lay traps, but none of that seems to apply here. It almost seems as though the gas itself was enough of a deterrent to keep people away. And this canister is just continuously spewing gas? Continuously, it keeps bubbling out, almost in heavy, thick clouds, uh, seemingly endlessly. And even though you have the advanced gas masks on with the filtration, it you swear you can almost taste it through the filters. It's a lot. Oh, don't like that. Yeah, I want to, Falconer being the officer, of course, will do the stupid thing um, and signal... Morose, McKinley, Thatch, hold perimeter, and approach the canister directly. Oh. All right. Second Lieutenant Faulkner, as you get closer, um, the canister seems... You, you've seen shells and you've seen gas canisters before, but this seems a little... It seems a little different, and as you sort of approach it cautiously, you make out there are- there's, there's something on it. There are symbols painted on it. 
and they kind of glow in this sort of sickly green and uh yeah no it's not anything you've ever seen before not by any means but there's that kind of that kind of tickle in the back of your head that there's something yeah. a little mm, yeah Which one are you who's got a knife? I got one. Pass it you know to what? me, boy. You're not fucking serious. Pass uh, me a fucking knife. That's an order. Thatch hands off the knife without question. I used it to, like, tap it against the side of the canister, like, lightly. All right, you tap it against the side of the canister, and it taps slightly. It doesn't seem to react too much physically. The sort of... Uh, the sort of green markings on it kind of almost seem to almost imperceptibly seem to brighten a little bit and then fade off a little bit. Take the tip of the knife. And I'm kind of like crouch in front of it trying to like block view from my com uh, companions and just kind of like tip the knife against one of the symbols and I'm just going to draw a carve a single divisive break through one of these painted symbols to see if that ruins it and, okay. and as he's uh taking a knife to a gas canister that seems to spew forever uh morose with their lieutenant's back turned to all of them just kind of signals to the privates to step the fuck back as far as they can without abandoning sight on him. That just already fucked up. <laughs> like, <laughs> not oh run God. away, but he's not fucking with that. that, that that's way too close. Yeah. He, he... Man, I McKinley saw knife the knife and he's like, I'm okay, up, step back. <laughs> Time to go. <laughs> All right. Second Lieutenant Faulkner, I want you to make me a whispers roll, target number two. Oh boy, that's mm -hmm. probably impossible. Um, no, about considering, that. considering I only have one die. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. See, uh, so the way the whispers work is that the paths are associated with one of the main attributes. Right. So old. is not getting any fucking encore performance i'm packing this thing and also is it how big is it by the way uh it, it's it's a it's a fairly it's a fairly large canister i'd say it's probably like the size of your forearm and like fairly uh thick around maybe like a 
football, EU football, soccer ball size. Can so. I can I wench it free from the ground and like pull the, the shell out? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's not too difficult to pull the shell out and yeah, no, the, the rubble stays pretty solid. There's kind of, it did hit a dugout pretty much directly, but it seems to be fairly sure. stable. Good, because I would like to hold on to this canister. Right. Um. We're good. We're good. I finally exhale after that. That works. Um. I gesture to that stopped and just says, "All right, it's done. Let's get out here for the jetties. Get find us." Thank fuck. All right. You heard the man. Let's go. <sighs> I want you to, um, I, I, who, who has the remaining Molotov, by the way? Thatch. 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 Yeah, it's, it's a ruined dugout. There's, and did we ever, did, it, were the, the rats were pouring into this area? The rats and the vermin actually stayed at a kind of oh, radius. Okay. They didn't go completely near. Once the gas stopped, they sort of started coming in a little closer and sort of swarming around the area. But, uh, yeah. Interesting. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, okay, Thatch, listen, we got Jerry's lurking around here somewhere uh, looking for survivors and it, I'm going to presume that it is Tink, tink. I knock, I rasp my knuckles against the the, the shell, um, and just say, "Cause this is some fucked up experiment of theirs." So here's what we're gonna do: we're gonna make sure that where we are, they aren't, and we're gonna make sure that uh, they have little thing preoccupying their time. I find that I want to find like the largest like cluster of like rubble and rats in this area. I'm gonna point at it and I'm just gonna say, "Burn that," and then fucking go. Let the jetties find the fire while we fuck off elsewhere. Uh, yeah, the probably the largest cluster would be sort of where the uh, top edge of the trench just sort of collapsed cool. down to where it was. Yeah. Give them a fucking fire to f look at, and then we will run elsewhere. Distract them, I'd say. Don't want to run into them by incident and one of us gets shot. Okay. So, yeah. Light it up. Uh, Thatch takes out a lighter. Lights a fucking Molotov and sets ablaze to like the biggest fucking pile of wooden rubble that's there. All right. So no questions. Now we fucking go. So thatch. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> as oh, you no. get, as you get closer, close enough to sort of lob the Molotov, the makeshift Molotov, before it manages to leave your fingers something lurches and crawls out of the dugout and it looks like a soldier it looks like a british soldier who is wearing one of the shitty like early generation gas masks and it's sort of like he sort of like crawls out and sort of like heaves a little bit and shakily starts to get to his feet and then he lifts up his head and burn it, burn, no, burn. I throw it at him. <laughs> no, no hesitation. I fucking throw it at him. All right. All right. G g give me, give me a brief moment before we resolve the throw. It lifts its head and you look it straight in the lenses of its gas mask. And then you realize no, that don't. you realize that what looked to be like a, the hose that's sort of connected to the air canister isn't a hose at all. No, it's not. It is. No, it's a hose. It's a regular a hose. slimy, oh, undulating, writhing tentacle that has sort of burst out of the bottom of the mask. It's not the a tentacle. The, the bottom of the mask is torn away and the face is distended around this appendage and it lurches forward and you throw the molotov throw and the cocktail, make me a make me a range roll big boy yes Let's that was thank you that was... <laughs> yeah right away throw that fucking canister right now we didn't see a goddamn thing you're gonna fucking burn it right you want to meet you want to meet at least a four. Oh fuck fuck me oh no 
Okay, bro. Oh, <laughs> Julian, this is hey, 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 How many points do you have left? Uh, I have one. <laughs> oh, fuck. I can make two successes. Wait, but oh, that's no, not no, enough. Reroll the other three. Spend it to reroll the three. Maybe you'll you get you can get lucky and get three straight successes. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, right. Go ahead and re-roll it. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's re-roll those, those other it. three because you got one. Son of a bitch! Uh, uh, we had you, two. You have back. two cards. You have. Co I, oh, I could sacrifice my cards. Fuck that music cue that just started. Hold on. Hold, hold on. on. Hold on. I could. I could. So if I if I burn my cards, gone. if I if I burn my cards, does it make it an automatic success or does that add a point? Each card burned adds a point. Um, we already spent it though, right? Lads. It's too late there, to burn cards. There, there's no use to burn a card. I'm not I'm not getting this. We're just gonna have to take this L. And wait, just just to clarify the rules, only the person making the roll can burn cards Correct. to give benefits to that roll. Okay, gotcha. That makes sense. Okay. Nice try. I hate this. I just wanna go on the record and say that I hate this. Okay, Good. that was good effort. Keep your cards, save them for I when you're it. really fucked. Oh God! So much. Why? All right. Uh, it's initiative time, baby. We're gonna be in some fucking combat. So if anyone feels like they should be going first, uh, the initiative to beat is a six. For this, whoever this is, whatever uh, this is. And then, yeah, go ahead. The initiative to beat is a six. Where where we throw out a card, right? Yeah, you just uh, you just. You don't have to, you, you don't get rid of the card, you just show the card and the person with the highest card gets to go first. Unless right. they don't want to go first, in which case uh, the, they don't have to throw out the card. I have r really fucking high cards. I'm actually gonna like just voluntarily say, I'm not going first. I'd like somebody else to go first. I am uh, a sniper man with the sniper game. <laughs> uh, whoever, whoever threw that card out, take it back. Word. Stop playing cards, you pansies. Yeah. Also, you can you can say it. This is this is the one uh, place yeah. where you can say what you have. So we yeah. have a jack, oh. and we had something else. Jack of hearts. I've got a nine. Okay. Uh, I have one card. Yeah. I honestly, have... it's okay. You're not it's, burning it. it. You're not burning it. Also, it's literally to just decide who goes first. Once that person is picked, then they get to pick who goes next. Then that person picks who goes next, and that person picks who goes next. Yes. Guess who's going first? I've got an ace. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't, you don't have, have to. to. You can. You, you don't have to if you don't want to. Going. Yeah. I'm gonna go. Let's do this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. McKinley. Oh, McKinley. Up to the blade. So I do Fast on the draw. Before we, before oh, we yeah. like, like go in. Are we going in guns blazing, or do we want to try to keep this as quiet as possible? Because if we want to stab a bitch, you know, we'll get- Don't get fucking we'll... close to it. Don't get fucking close to it. <laughs> this, okay. is, geez, this is fucking pestilence. Open fire on this, this fucking thing. I have not seen something like this before. This sucks. My friend, that thing has a fucking tentacle growing out its face. Don't touch it. I just would like to be careful. I'm sorry. It's, it's disgusting, so just fucking shoot it. <laughs> No, that motherfucker's gross. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 is that how they eloquently put it in America? How about you put that in your fucking gumbo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're all about to be turned into gumbo if we don't fucking shoot it. All right, so. <laughs> Private McKinley, please spare us all and uh, take the shot. So. Oh. Yeah. So. So. <sighs> Homie, what's your range? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I try to volunteer. <laughs> hey, okay, you, but melee's an option. Cards are an option. <laughs> yeah, but. Oh, oh, okay, so. so McKinley is gonna try his darndest to shoot the dang thing. He's not even worried about stealth right now. He he is so done. He's been crawling in trenches. He's been stepping on stuff he's never seen before. He's he, he's done. He's like, no, we're gonna shoot this guy like we did the first ones. <laughs> and we're going all in, baby. 
We are gonna throw a point in for oh, the training, yeah. and then two. Uh. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, yeah, the the target number to hit is a four, so. <laughs> I don't like that one bit. Target it hits a four. I How can't do anything. Oh, I found a Lee Enfield with a fucking scope on it. <laughs> All right. Is, is the rules at the end of your turn? You you vault, you tell you say who's going next. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you guys can talk amongst yourselves a little yeah. bit. Just don't take too long. Yeah. Can I have my knife back? <laughs> <laughs> That's your so fucking priority right now. Give me my you can assume knife. you have a backup knife. You're a soldier. You absolutely have a backup knife. Or a bayonet. Just take the bayonet off your rifle. It's fine. So, so he missed. Okay. He, he like shot and missed then, I guess. Fucking good Unless... shot, McKinley. I mean, there was... Wait, did I roll? Oh, yeah, there was zero success. Yeah. Um... He misses, and then he's like... Bro, bro, you want to try? <laughs> He's just like shaking his boots. <laughs> well, thank you for the formal invitation, Moroz. Fucking shoot it! <laughs> there is, there is a genuine pause where Moroz, who has already had his rifle at the ready, when McKinley fucking shot, where he just slowly turns to look at the private, like, are you? Fucking kidding me! Like even through the gas mask, you can see his eyes squinting <laughs> through the fucking glass. <laughs> and then, and then the left hand says, "I'm on it! God damn it!" And he fucking fires. <laughs> uh, which, by the way, I have a plus two in range. Just so you would have known. Give me don't four successes. Up, don't fuck up! Don't fuck up! Don't fuck up! Don't fuck up! Jesus Christ! All right. <laughs> Give that a go. Five and then he Alright. Yeah, I fucked up once, but I'm gonna go ahead and re-roll all of those. <laughs> okay. May I ask, how are we how are we missing these? Is it just like 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 our aim is like rough right okay. now, or is this motherfucker dodging? So uh basically how it works is <laughs> if you're making physical attacks you're trying to meet the uh you're trying to meet the opponent's bronze stat which is their like sort of physical ability and constitution so it really depends on how i want to flavor it and in this case it is you shoot it takes the shot it does not stop yeah we hate that in the army just keep fucking shooting it until something happens <laughs> yeah uh, oh. So I think I'm on checkmate on this one because I can. I can't re-roll twice, right? Um, I I think I think you can actually. Uh, we'll say yes, and uh, I'll double check it, and we'll figure that out for the future. Do you have left? I have one more. Fuck. See? Yeah, I mean it's like worth the attempt to roll those last three to see if fate's in your hands. Yeah. Uh, and burning a card, if I were to burn a card, does that's not a success, that's a point. As it's a I point for you up. to use, yes. Oh shit, I mean, like, yeah, you could feel like burning cards and just be like, re-roll, and then if any of them are close, you can nudge them by burning your cards. That's what I'm saying, is I could nudge that four and then re-roll the other two. Honestly? Honestly, if because of how many cards you have? I have two. If you if you if you spend your last point to nudge that four to a five and then burn a point to re-roll, and like both of them land there, or if one of them lands there and one of them is close, then you can just burn your last card and hike it up, man. I, I know, but here's the thing: that's stripping a lot from a rose, and that's that may not even kill it. <laughs> this is true. This is true. That's a I'm gonna. I have what remind me what your guts is by the way. Uh my guts is a uh, four. Okay, maybe take the L because I have a five. I'm gonna unload this fucking thing. Alright. Uh I'm gonna go ahead and uh actually I'm you know what? Leap of faith, I'm gonna re-roll all of those and all right. <laughs> Yeah. Come on, big use, money. Use the base. 
Big uh, money. I'm keeping the one success. So Big I'm money, no whammies. Uh, Ooh, I can burn a card. Burn a card. Burn a card. All right. So, uh, just drag it out on the table for me, and tell me oh, no. what Lance Corporal Morose loses. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, would you like a reminder as to what suit represents what? No, I know what it represents. All right, drag it out. Ah, okay. Would you like to give it a go, Corporal Morose? Would I like to give it a go? I am... Am I the only one who can make a shot in this fucking... We're gonna die. We're all gonna fucking die. I'm the only one who can make a shot in this fucking group, other than maybe the lieutenant, and he hasn't even fired his goddamn gun. I could make a shot if I was lucky. I'm holding an artillery south shell. <laughs> I don't know, bro. We're babysitting the privates. They sent us in with two privates that can't shoot the guns, and the we're... fuck you mean I can't shoot? <laughs> Shut the fuck up! This is a soliloquy. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when I was back home, I, I learned about a way to avoid a situation like this. And that turns around and he runs. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Hold, hold, uh, so, Barros, you squeeze the trigger and with that realization, your bullet hits true. And it hits the thing and it seems to stop and it seems to twitch and reel a little bit. And uh, you successfully do damage to it. Congratulations. Who goes next? Fuck also, me. keep in mind, you eventually have to let the enemy go next. Yeah, eventually Somebody has being to choose. the operative word. So, fucking Morose having that realization, takes the shot, sees the thing stumble, and just straighten itself out, and just very loudly, fuck me. Faulkner, Graham, fucking shoot him! Yeah, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> um, All right. Wait, uh, point of point of order, really quickly. When Marlo totally beefed it at throwing the Molotov cocktail, did it still like break and go off and just completely miss by a mile, or did like the bottles like roll and it's still intact and still like lit? Uh, like, shit, shit's on bottle. fire, just like out of the way. Damn. I was really hoping I could like run and grab me like spike. <laughs> uh, that's fine. <laughs> Blast it with a Molotov. <laughs> oh, that's it, how they do it in Scotland, motherfucker. That's how we do it in fucking Glasgow, to be very fair. Now, uh, if, oh, no, yeah, let's be honest. Here's down. something. It is so Scottish to take a Molotov, a lit Molotov cocktail, turn it upside down, and bean a, a motherfucker with it over the head. Get a little fire in your uh, sleeve. No, oh, I'm fucking gonna... right, demo man. Jesus. I'm not. I'm. I'm not an alcoholic enough to get to be the demo man. I'm gonna take a shot at this thing. All right. Um, the target number to hit is two because damage was done to it. Oh, two, you say? Okay, I'm gonna dump every fucking point I have into this. I actually can't. It caps out at five. Uh, so I'm gonna dump four points in there. Um, I'll save one for the money. It's one success. And of course, that's, there's a four in there, so I'll make that. A, I'm gonna use that, bump it up a little bit, uh, to right. make that a, 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 another success as well. All right. Pop, pop, you, pop, pop. you take the shot, and it staggers, and it very slowly falls to its knees, and very slowly collapses onto its face, and then you realize that all the vermin that's been circling around you stops. All of the rats stop and they are all looking at you all dead in the eyes almost as if they're one creature and they swarm in like this massive tidal wave of rodents and uh, they move in to attack you uh, uh, question 
Yes. Is my turn over? Yes. Fuck. All right. I'm gonna do something unpopular here. I'm gonna say that the rats can go next so that we can save the rest of us for afterwards. Let's have the rats go first. <laughs> I think if we can take a hit, but then we can go afterwards, get this out of the way now, so we can all as a majority still act. Are you sure you don't want me to like take a shot or something first before we start a new round? Cause I haven't taken a shot yet. It's not a new round. It's like we're picking, right? the enemies have to go at some point. Yeah. So it's like, and I'm just gonna you, have the enemies go now. Yeah, you would have the last. You will have turn, the last thing in the round. And then you All could right. theoretically, directly after the one that follows you, get another one. Exactly. All right. All right. All right. I like it's popcorn. rat time, baby. It's rat time. All baby. right. What are these <laughs> rats going to do? Kill us, like, presumably. Presumably. I think they're actually going to swarm. Morose, who took the uh, I shot. fucking knew it! So, uh, what's your brawn asking for a friend? Oh, no. Four. Okay, give me a second. Oh, no. Oh, no. Who are you gonna see that, hmm, bro? Let's see. Just want a point of order for people in the chat being like, Faulkner can command rats! I can command and singular rat, thank you very much. Yeah, so tell <laughs> one of them to fuck off! Yeah, okay. Nope, <laughs> 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 no, give, give me a moment. They get oh, to reroll and use points too. Fuck. Oh no. So what do I want to do? I think I'm gonna, two, three, four, five, I'm gonna use one point to reroll five. If a rat has any more than one brawn, I'm gonna fucking lose it. I'm gonna fucking There's a lot of rats! Two successes. It's only two, two successes. Right? Uh, there's still one point remaining, so they're gonna reroll the other four. Oh. Alright, uh, please take one damage to your brawn. Please keep in mind that uh, now the next time something attacks your brawn, they only have to meet the damage number until you heal. That's and that's my physical, right? Not like correct. My skin. That's your physical. Yes. Okay. Oh. So this sort of tidal wave of vermin sort of swarms in, swarms up your legs, claw claws at your chest, at your neck, at your face, even and just bites the hell out of you, and god, does it fucking hurt. And... Fuck! All right. <laughs> go, go right ahead. First, private first class thatch, let's go. And uh, keep in mind, they are kind of harder to hit because it's a swarm of rats. So just letting you know ahead of time. For sure, for sure. You yeah, know, I- grenades. I thought I was a funny little a funny little fella earlier when I made a joke about, you know, turning the fuck around and going away. What do y'all think? <laughs> you think that's a bad idea? Run, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> fuck this shit. <laughs> that just turns around and he fucks off. He's running. He's like, yeah, go, 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 go. Like, he's, he's gone. I'm out of yeah. here. Bye. Yeah. Live to fight another day. Fuck these rats. What is... Fool. What's that Worry about mean? It. Oh no. Anyway, who goes who go anyway, who goes next thatch? Uh fucking Let's get Morose out of that situation. Get out of there. Can I run from this situation? <laughs> yeah, you you can you can run. I mean they're still free to follow you if they want, but you can run. Mm. It's a long way to run, isn't it? The big um, question is, how the frick are we going to take care of these things? We shouldn't. <laughs> I think we should just go. I wasn't trying fighting. to be an exterminator, I was trying to be a soldier. Fuck that. Yeah, um... Uh... Um... Uh... Okay. Hmm... <laughs> See, this is difficult, because I'm better at 
shooting things than I am at stabbing things, and they're all on me. You can still try and fire off a shot. I mean, it's it's fine. You don't get like a super penalty for trying to use ranged in melee, not in this game. Do we have grenades? It's reasonable for you all to have at least one or two grenades because you're soldiers. No. That... Fuck you, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, yes, we have grenades, but no, fuck you for <laughs> even insinuating. Uh, no saying we're gonna throw a fucking grenade at you, or like, I'm just saying, if we have a pile of rats, throw a. F if, we, if we're running from them, we can always just throw grenades behind us. Okay. Uh, Squid Face. Is he still standing? No, he's dead. New objective. Survive. <laughs> <laughs> if I were to try to escape this entanglement of fucking vermin, what do I have to roll? And how much? Hmm. Entanglement of vermin is the name of my death metal band. I gave, I, I, I gave you that one. <laughs> uh, it'll probably be a little difficult, so if you're foregoing your, you know, attack action to try and do something else, I'll say give me a... Ooh, that would be contested, wouldn't it? Mmm... Let me double check some stats real quick. You know, they're small enough, so I'll have that. I want a three success on a brawn. Or on, on an athletics, sorry. I can do that. We'll see. I can do that. It's a three? I need a three? Yes, target number three. Alright. No, don't do that. That was really bad. Oh, I'm bumping that! Ooh, right. <laughs> you wade your way out of this sea of okay. rats. <laughs> fucking stepping on some of them. Them crawling over you. Some of them going down, you know, the fucking shirt of your fatigues, but you've managed to claw your way out and you can do your best to run. Cool. Awesome. Who's going next? Grabbing rats and crushing them as he goes. Snaps one's neck while it's in his shirt. Uh, who goes next, Morose? Uh... <laughs> I'm not doing that. Uh, that never went well. Uh, fucking... Faulkner, come on! <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I would like to get the fuck out of here. However, I'm also doing so. Okay. I'm out of the rat pile now. You're out of the rat pile. Thatch is out of the rat pile. McKinley mm -hmm. and I are still like in the rat pile, right? Generally, I mean, you guys weren't like rat in the pile super adjacent. Thing of it. There. When when you say rat pile, please realize. It's not just one pile, it's everywhere, yeah. no matter where you yeah. throw a grenade, you're gonna hit rats. And you, it's reasonable yeah. for you to throw <laughs> something and not hit your comrades. It's not about throwing grenades, it's about you narrated something very specifically that caught my ear. You said they are acting like a hive mind. Yes. Multiple rats in one way, so that's why I'm just like, okay, cool. I can, I can, I can vibe with animals. I, I have a pretty strong feeling that even if I try to vibe with one of them, it ain't gonna fucking work. I mean, this is some unnatural. We'll we'll say it this way: the sort of feeling in the back of your head, that sort of itch in your inner ear, tells you that if your will is strong enough, maybe you could break that. Maybe. What? What would I need to roll? You would need to roll... Let me double check some stats here. Dude, he goes to the queen rat and just talks her out of it. I would want a target number of three successes, because you're going to be rolling versus their smarts, since that's what, uh, that's what Old Ways uses. Goes up to the queen rat like, we're sorry, our, our lord, like... 
No, no, so no, you gotta go with the Queen Red and like this. Falconer is going to toss the artillery shell at McKinley. It's for him to catch it. Um, and then he's just gonna point and say, fucking run. And Faulkner is gonna actually go actually into the rat pile. Um, oh. Is gonna wade right. Is gonna go right in. Um, is going to grab a rat, forcibly hold it to his arm to get it to bite into his forearm. Um, grab another one, like snap its neck. Um, drop to the growling rat, like scurry around him and shit. And he is going to just like take the blood from his arm and just draw lines on his face and just begin to like dig his fingers into the sodden, defiled earth and just almost like that Mongolian throat singing, just like in just like ancient Gaelic tongues. I want to try and commune with the rats. All right. Roll me that, uh, roll me that old ways and I want at least three successes, please. I'm going to dump all my points into this okay. um, because I plan to burn cards to succeed. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm going to roll a uh, 4d6. You do have quite a few. I do. All right, that's one success. I'm going to burn one of my cards to um, re-roll. Okay. Uh, I'm going to burn this card. So I'll re-roll 3d6. Whoa. I have more cards, I have more cards. Okay. Burn another. Re-roll those three. Alright. Oh! 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 Let's go! Oh, there, there it is! There it is! So, before, before <laughs> I yeah, before tell on. you what <laughs> happens, you got rid of a club and a diamond, so tell me what you lose. I haven't gotten to do this yet, so I was like, oh boy. Okay, so, um, what do I lose? Clubs are things overcoming obstacles in adventure, mm -hmm. uh, and diamonds are, okay, I'll start with the diamonds, because diamonds is self, ambition, or hopes. Yep. I lose any ambition, hope, or care I personally have for the safety of myself. I think that's uh, a good, I was a king of diamonds. So I think it's really fair to say that's a strong one. Right yeah, there. yeah, no, I for sure. I lose any sense of self identity of self preservation. I am now wholly devoted to the notion of do it and protect others at even if i die um ha yeah motherfuckers i took i lost something and i spun it in a really cool way no <laughs> sad things here yet uh clubs though i'm having a little tr tr yeah. difficulty thinking with this one clubs is like things overcoming obstacles action and adventure um hmm. is it possible i'm able to am i able is it all mental things i'm losing or do kind of lose physical things Generally, it's kind of aspects of who you are as a person. It doesn't have to be necessarily a physical, physical thing. It could be something as, it could be something as simple as remembering what something felt like. Remembering, okay. yeah, so, stuff. I'm, there, there, I'm there's, going, yeah. Then for things, I'm going to lose what it felt like to run around the woods when I was a kid of my family home. The adventure of playing in my, where I grew up. All right. Does that satiate you evil god of the deck? Yes. Okay. So, For now. in your desperation, you shove your fingers into the grimy earth and mud and as you feel things drain from you and you feel that itch in the back of your head get a little louder, it works. It works a little bit. It works a little bit that the swarm thins. You see probably about half of the rats almost felt like you were fighting something, but 
you broke through and about half of them seem to pause and not really realize what they were doing and they run mind you there's uh, still a smaller swarm happening but sure. uh, it's not no, nearly I, the I, behemoth it was um can i ask do i don't have any control over these rats i freed do i you do not okay so that's the trade-off even though i i, I so i i'm able to break most of the swarm okay cool great i do that i definitely collapse slightly exhausted um but like I'm gonna like push myself up to my feet and um, survey the scene. And I'm gonna end my turn there willingly, just even though I'm still in the middle of rat ratopia, I'm gonna pass it over to McKinley. Who definitely witnessed me do that, I imagine. Oh, I think he's yeah. the only he's member like... of the party who saw me do that. So he, he, he's got this canister thing. Sorry, sorry. What was it that he threw over again? It, it, was, it was the a... artillery shell that was spewing gas that I caused it to stop. So it is basically the but... evidence of whatever the fuck happened here. So... Dang. I should have thought more about what he was gonna do. I was too focused on what this guy was doing. Um, so, so he's got this artillery shell. And he... He is scared out of his mind. He's... Uh, he just runs. He just tries to run. He doesn't have any other options. Brain empty. He's fear personified. Yeah, and okay. he unashamedly starts screaming like a little girl. <laughs> and he turns around and tries to run. Oh, that means the rats have to go now, right? Yeah, they do. Oh, boy. No, Let me okay. just uh, I, go back hey. to my stat block. Yeah, I have, I have... I have not taken any damage, so I mean... I thin the herd. I am fine with getting attacked right now. Luckily, since you did thin the herd pretty significantly, actually, you feel like there's a really big decrease in numbers, almost cut in half. Uh, they swarm you, but it doesn't... It's definitely not as bad as it was with Morose. So let me... Let's make some rolls, baby. Must be nice. Let's see. Two... Three, four... Five... What's your brawn? Two. Okay, we'll start with uh we'll start with four then. It's fine. Oh, shit. Uh, you know what? Yeah, no, that's that's fine. So uh as you are on the ground still almost face down, hands buried in the earth. The remaining rats take their opportunity and they jump on you and they start gnawing at you, tearing you to as many little pieces as they possibly can. You take one point of brawn damage. Or physical damage. Bond. Sure. Now, I get to choose who goes next. Oh boy. And I choose... Actually, hold on. Let me double check something real quick. Oh, but you're... Are you about to say I choose the Germans because they show up and they start shooting at us too? Fuck you! <laughs> Fucking Otto and his posse show up like the Zazi, ah! Ba -ba -ba -ba. You don't know anything I knew about I them. I should have killed him. You, know, you don't know anything. Those that's a completely different area and group of people. But you're not wrong. You Fuck. do see. You do see a uh, kind of almost sort of opposite of you, kind of, sort of, there's a bit of, um, like, the fire is starting to peter out a little bit as the alcohol burns off, but opposite of you, uh, you look up and you see the three German scouts that you saw earlier, and you see them, you see them see you, and the head one who's holding out the larger weapons barks a command 
and they actually start attacking the rats. So, because goddamn, if that's not terrifying. So let me see, double check real quick. So I've got three of them. That would be a ranged attack. That would be two, four, and I have one more to play with. Make sure I rolled the right one. Excellent. All right. And that is actually one above. So let me double check combat real quick. Uh, da -da -da -da. How much more do I need? Damn. All right. Not quite enough. So the German with the, you know, larger weapon, he barks out the order. His other two scouts sort of kind of circle around and start putting in crossfire, trying to get some rats in here. And the larger weapon belches out this gout of flame and napalm. It is a Flammenwerfer, or a oh, no. flamethrower. And they are attacking the rats, and it doesn't look like they're focused on you lot at all. It kind of actually looks like they're kind of scared shitless of what's happening, too. Sure. So, they go, and I will choose... Hmm... I will choose McKinley to go next, at the top of the next round. Oh boy! So, and you he, understand he German still... too, so you heard the command. <laughs> so he, he's still running. Uh, I mean, like he was running with this thing, but like he skids to a stop when he realizes they've got like reinforcements. And he's gonna take what he's gonna get at this point. He takes, um... He... He, he kind of tucks his, the, um, shell under one arm. And he, he takes his other one. He doesn't bother trying to load his rifle. He's just gonna start using this, this, uh... The, the knife at the end of it to just start stabbing rats <laughs> as best he can. Stab a stab those stab rats stab and stab. uh due to the crispy, you know, the the flamethrower, they actually took significant damage, so you only have to meet a target number of 2. Ooh. And this is melee? Melee? Yeah. Yeah, melee. Okay, let's see what we can do! Let's go! <laughs> Woof. Do you have any points Woof. in reserve? I don't. I only had three brawn. I didn't have any training Oof. for play, so... Yeah. Oof. Let's burn a card, baby! Alright! <laughs> yes! Yeah, slap it on the table! Let's go! Again, let's Fuck. destroy our sense Man. of selves! Fuck yeah! There are it's no innocents in war! See this, folks? <laughs> this is the meat grinder that we're putting ourselves through. Uh, Alright, McKinley. Oh, that's a big card. That means you gotta lose mm -hmm. something big related to that suit, since it's an ace of diamonds. Exactly. Oh my god. That's an so... ace of self, holy shit. So what poor. leaves you, McKinley? Poor, poor McKinley. He was still holding on to some sort of hope that he would make it back home. He had a mom he wanted to help take care of, he wanted to settle down, have wife, kids. He still had some hope of humanity of like making it out alive and the whole reason he joined the army was so that he could help his family and protect them and that sense of duty is completely gone he no longer cares if he lives or dies. 
He just completely stopped caring. He's lost almost everything that made him who he was and why he joined the army. He doesn't know what he's doing anymore. Well, uh, make me that reroll, Private McKinley, then. Let's see if it was worth it. Boy, here we go. Very, very awesome. good. Driven Yay. by your desperation and just this sort of animal instinct. You take your bayonet and you start you start butchering, you start skewering as much as you can, trying to at least make a bit more of an opening for, you know, maybe someone to get out, or at least to stem the rest of the flow of the rats. And you do significant damage to them. You do a point of damage. So that means the next person who shoots only has to meet a target roll of one. So, uh, good job, McKinley. Hope it was worth it. Pick who goes next. <laughs> Boy. He, he doesn't care. He's like. Rose, get him. He's <laughs> just like, Rose, get him. Rose, get him. <laughs> get him. Rose, get him. Rose, Rose, get him. Big brother Harry, get, get him. him. Kids, <laughs> <laughs> more, more, more. Yeah, Morose like, does not hesitate. He, he's taking in everything that's happening, but the first thing he takes in, the lieutenant's now getting fucking eaten up by rats, and that just won't do. So. All right. Fire up. <laughs> you, you give me a range roll. I want at least one success. Wouldn't it be funny? Wouldn't it be just hilarious if. Anyway. If what? Fuck you! <laughs> no, it's okay, he got two successes, so it doesn't matter. Oh, I don't like that. What, he misses and shoots me? No, 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 no. I got an extra point. I can I can re-roll the rest no, of those. No, 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 no. You, you, only, you, only, you only needed the one success, so you hear the call. Mid-stride, you whip around, take aim down sights, shoot. And between the fire... The, between the fire that you put in, between the cover fire from the German scouts and the flamethrower, as well as McKinley going nuts, melee-wise, the rats disperse. It almost seems whatever was, whatever spell was over them was broken, and they're no longer agitated. They kind of scatter. And after a few seconds, you watch the last of those furry black and brown bodies sort of crawl up over the earthen works, crawl down into whatever holes were left. And then you notice that, hmm, a lot of the vermin that you saw previously actually are gone too. You don't really see any insects, not as many as you did previously. And What about the Germans? The Germans are still there. And they're watching, but the the leader, the one with the flamethrower, he's ra he's sort of raised his hand in the sort of universal stop signal, and the other two scouts who had kind of uh, gotten up top onto the top of the earth and work sort of lower their rifles a little bit. And for now, it seems like you at least are at some kind of a stalemate. And I think right there is a good time to go on break. So we'll deal with the German scouts, we'll deal with the canister, we'll deal with all sorts of lovely repercussions in about, mm, I'd say 15 minutes or so. So we will see you then. All right, we are back from our break and we are ready to deal with, well, Whatever's gonna happen next. Are so, to deal with it? No. you better be. <laughs> so the vermin, the vermin have dispersed. The fog is still fairly thick, but it's not nearly to the level of it was as you were coming into this place. 
and sort of across this stretch of trench the ruin dug out in between the lot of you there stand on the opposite end the three german soldiers one of whom seems who seems to be the one in charge it looks like he's some kind of an officer and or higher ranking nco and the two scouts and their their weapons are you know kind of held at the loose they're not completely down mind you but it doesn't they're not trained or aimed at you and they wait they watch you all so since mckinley knows a little bit of german okay. he's just gonna kind of wave to him and go but he's gonna say hello and yeah, yeah. Just gonna ask how the weather is. <laughs> Cause that's about all he knows how to say. <laughs> uh uh Sprechen Sie Deutsch. Hello. Um Autobahn <laughs> Volkswagen. Uh none of as, these as... things are happening yet. I know. Discotech. I know. Uh, McKinley, you sort of, you sort of pipe out and you, you pipe up and you throw out a bit of a, uh, sort of a tentative greeting and you see the, you know, the, the head one who is kind of in charge. He sort of, he still sort of has his hand up to, you know, stop his troops, but he's kind of like slowly, he doesn't quite lower it. He looks like he's going to, but then he sort of like tilts his head at you and just, um, he points at you, and then he points down at Faulkner, pile of dead rats, and also that thing, whatever it was. And, uh, he kind of tilts his head a little bit. He just kind of... He doesn't quite understand what he's asking. Uh, you can roll me a communications check if you want. Uh, we'll give it a target Let's number of- Let's do that! Yeah, we'll give it a target number of, like, uh, we'll, we'll do two, but, um, one isn't a failure, it'll just give you less information. Okay. Let's throw it all into communication! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whatever. Hit it. Send it. You just won't be able to re-roll. Or up. Uh. Well, uh. Oh, fuck. Oh, well. catching up with us. There is a- there is a clear, um, lost in translation moment between the lot of you. And, uh, it doesn't look like the Germans are any willing to come any closer, but, um, he sort of- the, the finger that was pointing down at Faulkner then turns to point at you, and points at the shell, the canister that you're carrying. He gives Fucking... him a big universal shrug. <laughs> He's just like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> when, yeah, like when well, he points directly at the canister, Harry kind of visually gets more tense. Like, oh, they're coming for their thing. Yeah, and Faulkner also like is getting towards McKinley and definitely picks up on that vi that vibe too, and it's just like, oh fuck. They kind of they kind of note this, yeah. and they sort of look between each other. You sort of hear like some muffled conversation between them, between the gas masks, and they're talking a little on the lower side. You can't really super make out what they're saying, but it doesn't seem like the vibe is hostile at all. And actually, I am going to have them do a little bit of a... Between the lot of them, they don't seem to know all too much English or anything like that, uh, so they kind of- I want to try Is... something. Okay. I'm gonna- I'm gonna- I would like to roll communications 
because I would like to try speaking in Polish. Um, okay. And I feel like Falconer has some Eastern European adjacent like things. He doesn't speak any German, but he might speak a little bit of Polish. Maybe he speaks a little bit of um, uh, um, maybe Hungarian maybe like a, or something. A, li a little bit of Hungarian, a little bit of French, just like a little bit here and there. Not German, but seeing if any of these like a, like countries that are adjacent to Germany, see if any of these guys might speak another language like that. Yeah. No. Sure. Absolutely. Uh... I'll I'll give it the same uh, two, and then a one is still fine. It's just a little less effective. Two successes, no modifiers. You, you kind of you kind of cycle through the languages you know. You, uh, you you try the Hungarian, you try the Austrian. You hit on the you hit on the Polish, and one of them. One one of the scouts sort of like you see you see his mask sort of like visibly jerk up as he hears what you're saying and sort of like uh, he he motions to the man in charge and kind of uh, sort of waits for what seems like an order but then sort of like lets his rifle down sort of raises his hands and sort of like gingerly makes his way down the, yeah down the rubble and Faulkner sort of holsters with his pistol keeps it strapped but like is not having it hands also go up and will you know walk across the the field of dead rats to 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 meet this german boy halfway and i'm and and stop and whenever he wherever we are yeah um he sort of he's sort of like he you see his shoulders kind of go up and down he's like he takes like a Breath kind of like looks over his shoulder to make sure his comrades are still behind him, which they are. You know, they're right. Their weapons aren't pointed or anything, but they're back up and sort of. Uh, he sort of raises his little hand and. Uh, are you all right? You speak Polish. Yes. A sweet on a girl from Warsaw. I know a word here or there. We are. We're all right, all things considered. How are you? We are, um, sort of looks back. We are doing all right, all things considered. Warsaw, you say? My mother is from Warsaw. He sort of, he sort of, uh, looks kind of past, past you towards McKinley, towards the canister. It is, um, it is a dangerous thing, yes. Oh, I fucking picked up on that one, lad. Is it yours? You you, you see the sort of uh, mask tilt back and forth, isn't like a kind of, sort of... Listen, it... I don't give two fucking shites if it's yours or if it's ours. I don't... You didn't make it, but you're... You, it was produced by your side, wasn't it? As far as we as far as we were briefed, yes. But um I don't fault the gun for shooting the bullet, I blame the person pulling the trigger. What do you want with it? He he, he sort of he sort of raise, he sort of like raises his hands as in like a mm. whoa, hold on. He kind of turns back to his commander and uh says a few things in rapid German, and he's saying it loud enough and calling back that sure. McKinley, you kind of get the gist of he's kind of asking for clarification, like he's kind of confused, like they were sent for one thing, but then they were doing another thing, so he's not really sure what to say. But he turns back and uh, in Polish goes back to Faulkner. We are... We are s scouts. We were told to look. We look. It is... He looks around. It is a f failure of experiment, yes? That I picked up on. Context clues. Gesturing at the... F everything around us. It's either real fucking efficient or... Really fucking broke. Yes. It is, um, it seems the experiment was a 
failure, so perhaps... Perhaps we will return and say that it did not work. Perhaps you'll do that. Perhaps I'll take this shell and no officer on my side has to see it and the only company it'll have is a blast furnace before anyone can understand what it was meant to do. No need for uh, both sides to fuck up an experiment. He, he nods. He sort of, he's, the nods sort of increase. He, he once more turns back to his commander, says a few things. The commander nods curtly and lowers the nozzle of the flamethrower even more. Uh, I gesture like, you know, very loosely. Like, I wave like the commander over if he's willing. He sort of, he's sort of like a. He tilts his head a little bit, but he uh, he calls out to the to the other scout, sort of like a keep an eye out sort of vibe. But he kind of makes his way down. He doesn't approach you all the way mm, sure. up to where you are, as you guys are, but he's within range. I, I say in Polish to the to to, 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 the, to the German lad, just, you know, just translate between us. Um, yes. uh, what's your name? What should I? What rank should I refer to you by? Uh, I'm I'm just gonna speak yeah, as yeah, the I commander figured. going yeah. forward. Okay. Yeah, uh, this is uh, Tiaden, Sergeant Tiaden. Tiaden. And you? Faulkner. Left second Falk lieutenant. Faulkner. Second lieutenant. Faulkner. Velmet, Velmet Faulkner. It's quite a weapon you're carrying. It is, um, Big. new innovation, yes. Previously needed two men, now only needs one. It is heavy as shit, though. What will you Jerry's think of next? Um, I go for a cigarette and I'm just like, oh shit, I have a mask on. Um, uh, and I'm just like, alright. I nod, I nod at... The, 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 the German I was speaking to, I point back at the artillery shell and just being like, no one needs to know. No one must know. He, he looks at you and just after a long moment, no one needs to know. You will dispose of, yes? Uh, make sure this thing is melted down into its component parts before anyone else says it. Good. It is... This is... He sort of looks around. This is not worth... This is not worth any of that. Good to know you understand. <laughs> Put my hand out respectfully towards this German sergeant. Yeah, no, he, like, uh, he sort of lets the, he lets the nozzle of the flamethrower hang. It's kind of on a strap, and he reaches out, and he shakes your hand. It's a, you know, a nice, firm handshake. Then he withdraws, does a little salute. And the last thing I say to him before I salute him, he says, uh, you're an honor, um, so you're an honorable man, Tiaden. Fucking be honored if you killed me on the battlefield. <laughs> Well, I hope it does not come to that. But, um, likewise, I saw the, uh, nice trick. You strike me as a man who's got a few tricks up his own sleeves, or at least knows those who do. He, he, he sort of, he sort of shrugs a little bit, but he sort of, like, raises, he raises one of his arms and he does a few little slashing motions. Perhaps. But, um, what other people do not know will not hurt them. No one needs to know. He does another little salute, and yep. he calls off his men, and they head back over No Man's Land. Before the translator does leave, I actually open my shirt pocket, and I do take out a pack of English-made cigarettes, and I toss them to the kid. He, he sort of, like, fumbles a little bit with his rifle, but, like, grabs um, them. <laughs> and, and I say in Polish to this last lad being like, 
It's the only good thing the English ever fucking made. <laughs> you hear like this little nervous, awkward laugh from beneath the gas mask, and he thanks you, and he sort of um. He he sort of like pats himself as if he's looking for something in exchange, but he doesn't really have anything, so it's kind of awkward. And <laughs> hold up a hand, shake my head, and I just like salute to him. Turn back to my companions and just go. All right, let's go. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Big um, fuck. I, let's I, go. I, I can assume McKinley has heard this more or less this entire conversation. M McKinley got McKinley. Uh, seeing as he's got a little bit of German going on, he kind of got to the point where he kind of gets. It's easy for him to catch the vibes, if not yeah. like the specifics. And also like. That whole like last five minutes of conversation was translated from Polish to German and yeah. then retranslated. So like you definitely heard like a bit of yeah, so, yeah, you heard some of the conversation. Yeah. yeah, I just I just I pat Morose on the shoulder, pat McKinley on the shoulder. I'm like, all right, boys, good. And I like look down the fucking trench line to see how far Thatch is running. I'm like, um, fuck, they do build them good in America. <laughs> 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 I was actually gonna oh. ask at some point if, if Thatch was like gonna like run back out of breath because nobody fucking followed him. <laughs> is is the gas Wait. starting to clear now? Yeah, it, it started to ebb away a little bit, but you guys are all still wearing masks. Yeah. This, this man's been sucking down Thatch air through this gas mask. Running back up to us. Yeah, please. <laughs> it's up to that. Is it? Is it yes. safe enough to actually start taking off gas masks or no? Probably not. No, probably this not. Okay, this cool. shit's been around for like a week. It's probably not the best idea. Cool. Uh, that's absolutely fair. Yeah, so Thatch, you just <laughs> sprint back up. That's just... Like, like he, he... At this point, he's at like a bit of a jog now because he ran a long fucking way that way and now he's run a long fucking way. Like, imagine like a fucking track coach who's like just calmly like jogging along but like you can tell he's like a little out of breath but like that's just very much out of breath and he's like <laughs> 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 where the fuck have y'all been <laughs> fight right here um I just fight um covering your escape I, I gesture at Morose and McKinley I'm like it's making sure that you guys go away things turn sideways, so it's no there's no yet fine thought. She did a fine thing. You ran away, the situation was hot. I we were covering your escape and managed to handle it, so you're alright. Don't take uh, don't be ashamed. I thought y'all were gonna follow me about two minutes down the road. Oh, I was planning to do that. Was yeah. uh, it, it it was in your fairness and uh Morales gives like an empathetic like Pat on the back. We were going to. Uh, we we got ourselves preoccupied with some vermin. Uh, and then after the vermin, the German. German vermin. Nice rhyme. Is no, no, hold on, Pat. They, these jetties were very kind. The boys we were following before. We had a bit of a conversation. I, I wasn't calling them vermin. I was just saying German vermin sounds like a gumbo dish. It's actually <laughs> unfortunate you missed it. They actually gave me one hell of a schnitzel recipe. You could have given them some gumbo. <laughs> I right. fully believes you right now. <laughs> I, I've got right. a dead. I've got a. I've got a dead rat hanging off of my taint. Can we fucking go? Oh my fucking god! Please, for the love of God, let us go. I am all here for the fucking gallows hammer after we just barely survived a fucking rat attack. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I don't right. know about you, but I made it out just fine. <laughs> well, that's hey, very good. Sure. Now run again. Show us the way. <laughs> you were our scout. Let's go. <laughs> and and this time, really put some fucking oomph into it. I think the Olympics are going to be watching. I don't. The Olympics aren't a thing yet, are they? <laughs> they, they are. are. Oh, they are. Yeah, oh, they of course they are. are. They, they fucking started in Greece. Of course they are. Yeah, fucking, I'm dumb. So yeah, okay, go ahead. Go for the medal there, Jim Thorpe. Thatch shudders at the thought of how the 1904 Olympics went. <laughs> <laughs> Continues to walk. All right. The 1904 Olympics was a shit show. If you guys haven't looked it up, like, you really should. 
It's Ooh. a fucking shit show. That that's going record, on the list. Thank you. If you didn't if you didn't get my really clever history joke just now, Jim Thorpe was an Olympic gold medalist front runner, running sorry, running back. Uh so <laughs> nice. All right. So luckily leaving is a whole lot easier than entering and uh you guys did a lot of good work so i think we're due to hand out a few decorations actually Fuck Actu yeah. actually uh pause hold that thought what exactly are you gonna do with that shell because oh you know there yeah. are options but yeah. it's like you kind of figured if you kind of studied it a little bit you could probably get some information, or at least a little bit of an edge. Yeah. Out of what's should on I? It. Should I could? Now the question is, no one do sense. I want to? No one. Yeah. No one needs to know. Um, okay. And I, I'm debating though. Oh. Actually, no. I already established I lost my sense of caring for myself uh, over the other mission, so I'm going to remove any self interest I have in learning about this thing so I might be able to use it to combat bad things and I'm just gonna throw this thing straight into a fucking um you know scrap heap and make sure that it gets melted down into base components and, uh, and before he does that I mean you all are also free to maybe take it if you're interested and mechanically I'm gonna tell you if you claim the shell and decide to learn kind of take a look at the inscription you will get training in a path of whispers and you will get a ritual <laughs> sorry chat so you know fucking on cam carl's hand just slowly slid upward into frame <laughs> <laughs> that was great i mean mckinley was the one who's holding it so honestly i'm i'm if you want to have mckinley be like looking at that shit on the walk back before i put it in a scrap heap like fucking i'm not gonna stop you oh yeah like he's lost his will to live he might as well find out something else to do with himself. <laughs> you said Become that so a cultist. <laughs> I'm sorry. You said that so positively. He's lost his will to live. <laughs> so he's fucking with an artillery shell. Basically, I, I yeah. spiked artillery shell. It's fine. All right. Now we can go into the decorations because kind of what you all decided yeah. to do with it sort of figured into that. So for defeating the uh massive hive mind of rats fun times you all get uh who fired the last shot morose did so morose you get to draw two cards and then distribute them amongst the unit draw two cards and distribute them amongst the unit okay yep All right. For do I do I say what they are or do I just mm, hand them out? No, you, you you can just hand them out. And how do I hand them out? Do I just drag it? Oh, uh, just their numbers? just yeah, just drag it to their numbers, and you should get an option of the other person to take it. Right. So for. Bravery and being able to stop that bullshit. To Faulkner. Do I take that card on the deck? Oh, sorry, yeah. on the on the table. All right. Yeah, yeah. I dragged it onto the. We. And for rushing back in, it takes some bravery in it of itself for McKinley. Yes, Billy. Take it. All right. Mm -hmm. For defeating the whatever that thing was, uh, Faulkner, you hit the last shot. So you get to draw three cards. You keep one, and you give one to someone else, and the third one gets discarded. So I'll draw three. All right. Yep. I keep one. Mm -hmm. I give one to someone else, and I discard one. All right. Yep. I'm going to discard this card. Done. And for 
beautifully technique, for beautiful technique and uh, Olympic level athleticism, I'm gonna give this card to <laughs> Mr. Botch. Uh, I have me cards! All right. Woo! <laughs> All right, let me, uh, there we go. Oh. I need this boy to live to teach me what gumbo is. <laughs> so is he... <laughs> We've talked about it so much, I have to know before I die. All right. And for the very last decoration, for completing your mission successfully, you get to, you all as a group, uh, you get to draw two cards and distribute them amongst yourselves, except for you, McKinley. McKinley, I actually want you to draw for corruption. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh, shit. So, okay. <laughs> McKinley, draw a card. Keep it to yourself. Tell me what you drew. And uh, if it's a black card, you have a point of corruption. And if it's not, then you don't. So for the rest of us, we all draw two cards Ooh. and then... As a group, you draw two oh. and then you distribute those two amongst the group. How do we do that? So, sorry, I, I I thought it, I thought we were gonna get a put in corruption anyway. The fact that it could be black, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, only only black cards actually, um, unless I specify. If you draw, yeah. only black cards are corruption. So uh, just uh, DM me what you got, and then uh, drag the card over to me, and I will get rid of it for you. And then for the rest of us, how do we do like the group draw two? Uh, just uh, pick one of you all to draw two cards and then distribute it amongst yourselves you also cannot give one of them to mckinley morose you have the least number of cards why don't you pick the two yeah, he needs a card yeah uh, and wait that means do, do i keep the card for able... corruption or do i drag it out and i'll delete it yeah there it is honestly i was gonna really... say uh don't me drawing two and then picking amongst us mean that i get no cards you got. You can pick well, well, yourself. You can pick yourself. Like yeah, honestly, I, I don't. I don't know where yeah. you stand, Xander. But like, I, I'm. I'm okay with him just having both of those. Yeah, cards. I'm fine with that. I, that's why I say I, I. I was electing him just to draw the cards because he had the lowest of all of us. If he wants to like take both or give one to himself, one to McKinley, like I don't. I don't. I'm good. I have three. I'm fine. Well, you don't need to give. We can't whatsoever. give one to McKinley. Well, I right? can't give to McKinley. Oh. No. Oh right. Okay. The cool thing. Just, yeah. Keep him, dude. Then that way you're even keel with um, with Thatch and I. Carl, we gotta give you some cards. Give you some cards. <laughs> not this time. Some cards. I'll take not that. Too. No, not this time, but we gotta get you some cards soon. I don't mind. <laughs> Man, we really survive despite a lot, right? Like, holy shit. Right. We really we're have. Just managing. We're really just managing here. We got stories to tell if we go home. Well, you fool, we're never yeah. going home. <laughs> <laughs> Roll title. <laughs> he said it! He, he fucking said it. said it! He said it, King Julian! He said it! Woo! Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so have you guys distributed those two cards between yourselves satisfactorily enough? I would All say right. so. Yes. Cool. So, uh, without... Group. Without too much incident, you make it back to the aid station. And, uh, on, on, on the way back, you indeed pass uh corporal oliver who you left behind he's still dead thankfully but uh, i know that you in particular took your time to close his eyes and do that sort of thing but uh yeah no oh yeah that uh actually that that reminds marlo he wanted to um he, he kind of like jogs up next to uh morose morose why why did you shoot him? Was he pulling a gun? No. No, he wasn't pulling no gun. Threatening anybody? No. Wasn't threatening nobody. When you've been out here long enough, you get a sense for these things. So you shot him on a hunch? Wasn't exactly a hunch. You saw. Maybe we didn't see the same things. <clears throat> and Marlo just kind of turns Maybe forward not. and keeps walking. Hold on, before he goes, 
Yeah, he, he's not walking away. He's just he's yeah. just walking. Maybe not. But remember your answer. God is cruel. God is cruel. Marlo just keeps walking. March continues. You. Uh, while, while they're talking, uh, actually, I feel like Falcon uh, McKinley is up by Faulkner, because Faulkner is just walking ahead, you know, not looking over, um, and just says out loud, quietly, in a way that o that so McKinley knows, I'm talking to just you, not the rest of the group. What did you think you saw, live? You were the only one watching. I don't know what you want me to say, sir. I said something, but I think I might keep it to myself. I've seen enough. Good lad. And keep walking. <laughs> he's like, the the sad thing is, is that while he's saying this, he's just. It almost, it's almost like he's coming across as a blank slate, mm -hmm. like not reaction. He's not reacting. For, for those that might be familiar with war, he might seem a little shell shocked if they had mm -hmm. to guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you walk, and uh, McKinley, you you do get rid of the shell before you get back to the aid station in the camp. But as you walk, you've been studying it. You've been going over those symbols, those lines, the way the green glows almost like radium. And you feel something. You almost... As you look at it, the more you look, the more sense it makes. It's kind of like this creeping feeling behind your eyes, and you you now know what they mean when they call it whispers. Because you don't hear it, but you know what it's saying. And suddenly you know exactly what you can do. Oh, it's gonna be good. <laughs> so I will uh, slap that up for you. Well, for everyone. You get to choose one of these rituals, McKinley. Uh, pick one, and uh, that is yours that you can then do with as you please moving forward. Oh, that's so cool. So, uh. if, uh, <laughs> if anyone else has a anything more that they want to say or do? Uh, I think we're good. I think I'm good, at least. Just gonna oh, throw that fucking shell in a flash forge it was <laughs> before anyone can... before we debrief. Yeah. Bitch. Nah, it's easy enough to dismantle it, to get rid of it. You already had disabled the uh, kind of the markings and the etchings on it, Faulkner, so you can just kind of scrub out the rest of them and bury it, and it looks like any other shell. Great. So. And I fucking put it in a fire and melt that bitch down to its base components. And then, right. when we're out of the gas, take off my fucking mask and light a fucking cigarette! <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Moros offers us the lighter. No word, just leans in and lights. Uh, fuck that. Fuck All right. That. Who's hungry? I could eat. All right. Uh, chat for your reference. Uh, uh, at was just mouth on camera after all that 
<laughs> I'm so glad you can read lips. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You uh, are feeling fucking hungry. You make it back to camp. You uh, you know, you can take a little time before you debrief. It's kind of it's sort of a respected type of thing where once people come straight off the line, they're given at least a little bit of time to get back to being, I don't want to say human, but to get back to being at least relatively stable-ish before they're expected Great. to jump back into duties. The food's terrible, but the food's always oh, it's terrible. Awful. It fucking sucks. It's the water tastes taste. like gasoline, but it always does. So I think it's all right, yeah. personally. For the record, I had mentioned earlier that a rat, I had had a rat bite my forearm, and you know, because I'm Grime motherfucking Faulkner, while I'm smoking my cigarette at one point, I just take it and just put my cigarette butt right against the rat bite just to properly, you know, mm, cauterize that. Skin. Exactly. Just make sure I put a little fire there, just to burn them all out. <laughs> and put the cigarette back in my mouth. Right. What was that? A bit unnecessary, but all right. Eh, it's good to feel something every now and again. Uh, not to, I, I not to interrupt your dramatic TV moment. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, not not to like interrupt your dramatic moment, but like this literally is an aid station. Just, you know, oh, just yeah. reminding everyone else of that exactly. fact because I find I'm it very fully, amusing. I'm no, 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 just so we're all clear. I'm fully aware that I'm surrounded by medical supplies and doctors. I'm choosing to self cauterize with a fucking cigarette. I'm glad that both of you have clarified this because I just want to clarify that this statement was essentially the ye old version of weird flex, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, it is. Yeah. Yeah. That just makes a mental note of like you yourself and your character just, just like we're we're, we're at a fucking aid station and you just did. All right, well, it's because they should better they should use the supplies on people. Who need it more than I do for a fucking rat bite? I mean, all you have to do is pour a bit of alcohol on it. Waste the good why alcohol. Would I waste per why, that's why would I waste perfectly good alcohol? You know how much it takes to get fucking whiskey brought to the frontier, the front line. Ugh. Disinfected. Fuck. All right. You fucking English. I go back all to right. smoking. <laughs> So, um, one, once, once you all yeah. get the chance, you have, you have a choice on who you want to debrief to, since there seem to be two commanding officers in this joint. You've got Rosenthal, you know, the proper captain, and then you've got Newkirk, the surgeon, yeah, so. Yeah, Rosenthal was a bitch. We're, we're, we should talk to Newkirk. We I'm liked say, Newkirk. I like the one that isn't an asshole. Yeah. Yeah, no, we liked Newkirk. Newkirk was a solid fella. Right. You, you, you kind of, you kind of make your way back to the sort of, I guess you would call it a, a post op area, and luckily, with the gas being around, for you know a, a little while, it's been on the quieter side. So, Newkirk is available to look to you all and sort of. He sort of looks to you all, he kind of looks at, you know, his staff and the other people working, he kind of motions to one of them as like, take shit over, and he walks over, he sort of does the little, yeah, yeah, whatever, it is, it is. Right, um, I noticed. Oliver gone? We installed a really fucking big fan, blowing it away. <laughs> Uh huh. The situation's handled. That's good. Uh, we don't have to worry about any of that again. Not unless, uh, you know, it happens again. But uh, in terms of this exact place, this exact situation, is handled. It's as much. That's about as much as anyone could ask for. Um, but I don't think the uh, don't think the JDs are gonna try that one again. You slowly nod. Good to know. Uh, so, uh... 
the uh corporal he uh sort of like does a little head tilt towards the trenches he's not coming back then he found his piece well that's better than most of us can hope for yeah yeah indeed you're gonna want to take fire to that whole area just burn it thoroughly yeah corp for yeah corpses and dirt alike just give it a thorough washing burn out any vector for disease yep yep bury it in mortar fire if you need to just either way it might be safer <laughs> in the long run I well you lot thank you good to know that that's sorted and that at least some people can be relied upon um yeah before you go I do want to warn you we've been I know you're not stationed here but before you head out there have been a few issues in the area people disappearing places getting ransacked I know you're newer to this area of the war but um if you're traveling through here, it's good for you to be aware you're actually missing an entire unit, all things considered, so... Well... Do you know what exactly we should be working out for? Well... I'll tell you what. I've been... I don't know whether it's raiding parties, or scouting parties, or anything like that, but uh, some of the nearest supply depots have been completely ransacked, everyone in them killed, looted, the whole nine yards, and then we've got some of artillery batteries in the area also. No, uh, no communication from them either. A unit was sent out to one of the supply depots and that's when it all started. They never came back, and I don't know what happened. I don't know who did it, but uh, there's something going on. There's someone. And he sort of lowers his voice. Or something in the area. And um, this is... I know you all have your places to go to, but if you happen to, uh, happen to come across any of those um sort of if you happen to come across any of them uh just uh you want us to look no i can't ask that of you and i don't want that and he is being completely sincere as he said this i don't want that just um if you Just, uh, send a call. You know where we are. Our communication lines are mostly fine. Uh, just uh, let me know. I uh, it's um. He sort of composes himself. Anyway, it's been <clears throat> causing a right bit of trouble. So on your way out, just uh, yeah, keep an eye out. We can guarantee at least an eye. If you, uh, if you, uh, do end up seeing, uh, a, uh, he's, a, uh, you know, veteran looking guy, uh, sergeant, who was in the Boer Wars, uh, we, uh, I haven't heard from him in, well, since his unit went missing. So, uh, if you end up seeing him, just, uh, tell him or send word to me. Uh, yeah. We'll do our best. For now, my boys and I should head back to, to base, just to report back. Right. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, you might want to... He sort of raises his voice a little. You might want to, uh... Just check in with, uh... Rose... Captain Rosenthal. Uh, make sure you let him know everything's in order, so on and so forth. And then, you know, the whole... Whatever. Maybe after you do that, fuck off. Leave me alone. Yeah, ears open. Would would Faulkner take first leave? Probably. I'm fucking tired. <laughs> yeah, probably gonna take first leave. With that, as the Faulkner takes first leave, Maros doesn't assume the privates would stay, but if they do, he gestures them out. Just is the last one in the tent before asking simply for the captain his shoulders slouching very casually what's the name? the name of the oh um do you know what's uh, the name? is uh sergeant gray donovan gray that's his, that's his name If we find him alive, keep him safe. If not, come across him. I'll personally send word. Right. No, I uh, I uh, I appreciate it. We uh, enlisted together. <laughs> Stupid as that was, but uh... <laughs> I understand. I don't mind, are you? Yeah, he's a uh, last one of mine too, and um, he's uh, let's just say he's been incredibly lucky so far, and uh, I'm, I think his luck's run out, but he is hoping. Happen to be in the direction we're heading. Yeah. It is. The supply depot is, uh, he sort of gives you the directions. It's a little bit further in, and it, it is indeed. It's just barely off the route that you're going to. And, um, just, uh, keep an eye out. There have been other issues, other points in the area have been hit. Don't know by what, but, um, what uh if you i'll do my best to get a little more information for you and uh just come talk to me before you leave right thank you oh. that's corporal at least i can do i'm gonna so, get um, to he gives a straight salute, and he turns on a heel. So that you sort of get like a very like shoulders back, very like prim salute back, and just uh, well, at least it's more than most people. That's the hope. Right. So I think with that, we're getting to a pretty good stopping point uh i can be her yeah no uh, you succeeded on the mission we have a little time if you have enough cards and you would like to spend them you're free to spend them on character advancements if you so choose i know we talked about that a little bit previously but i'll uh i'll slap it back up there for you all if you want to spend things please by all means but uh, yeah, no, next time we end up playing Never Going Home, we will be on a new journey, on a new mission, so we'll see what happens.